Number one, IFBB, that's a, that's a red flag. Number two, Lifetime Natty, it's a red flag. Number three, Miss Olympia, two-time, red flag. There's a lot of red flags occurring. If you're watching this, you're watching another video, obviously. And today we're going to be covering part two of a video that was far more requested than I thought it would be, being the Natty or Not video. We're also going to kind of briefly talk about what to almost like look for when trying to identify whether somebody may be natural or enhanced. Again, as I said so many times before, could not care less if you're natural or enhanced. If you want to be enhanced, be enhanced. If you want to be natural, be natural. If you want to claim Natty when you're enhanced, get in the bin. It's that simple. I'm very much pro-choice when it comes to PD use, as I've said multiple times before. Either don't say anything about it at all, because frankly it is no one's business, and in many countries it is illegal, and it can also negatively impact your ability to get a job, or be honest about it. But don't lie and claim you're something when you're not. That's a problem. Unrealistic expectations, bit of snakery. We don't like snakery. Although we like snakes, got a few on my arm. Don't like snakery. First thing before we start, get the arm warmed up for this one. Headwear. They do not make these for big head sizes. Oh, that's making my ears look unfortunate, isn't it? First person on the list today, someone I actually covered recently in the TikTok video, and that's Lean Beef Patty. So we'll have a gander. Here she is. I'm going to be straight with you. I've seen a fair amount of her stuff, and to be honest, I'm quite a big fan. She produces some good content. I respect it. I appreciate it. A few questions do arise regarding whether I think she's natty or not, because obviously she has quite a lot of muscle mass. She's in great shape. She's very lean. These videos aren't based on fact. They're merely based on opinions, because I will never know. The only person who will ever really know is the person in question but I can give an opinion thinking what I would lean more towards be that natty or enhanced and when it comes to looking at lean beef patty's physique obviously it is very impressive it's not unbelievable almost like a good rule of thumb to some degree is if it looks too good to be true it probably is she doesn't promote or like just throw it in your face that she's natural or enhanced she just doesn't say anything about it I'm sure she probably does somewhere but it's not obvious that's a big a big yes in my opinion the thing I've noticed is this when it comes to like identifying potentially enhanced people I'm not saying they will be but but in quite a lot of cases those who really push that natural status in your face and use it as like a USP, a unique selling point, are oftentimes the ones who might be hiding something. So if you see something that's like, oh, 110% natural all over their bio or something like that, that where they're really trying to push and show the pride in being natural, that's a bit questionable. If someone were to get very defensive after stating, you know, I don't believe you are natural, that's also a bit of a red flag because for natural individuals, being considered enhanced is actually a massive compliment because people think that you're doing something that cannot be achieved without PDs. That's one of, the, one of the best compliments you can get, in my opinion, anyway. But yeah, looking at Lean Beef Patty, I, I think you look at her like, yeah, okay, she's in great shape, fantastic shape. It, it's nothing unachievable, it's nothing unattainable. She's got a very good knowledge of training. She trains very well. Genetics obviously favouring her. There's so many things that come into it. And when you've got all these stars that are almost like aligning, you're like, well, why couldn't you achieve what she has achieved? I very much lean towards Lean Beef Patty being natural. Very quickly, 22 seconds, time is on now, Austin. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you did like the video, because we are bumping up the like goal a little bit today. We're going to shoot for 400 likes. If you get there, I'll make a part three if you want to see it. Please do consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the red button down below and the bell next to it. And I know YouTube tells me, don't think I don't know. I know some of you not subscribed. I know some of you see me pop up on your recommended, your homepage, and be like, ooh, team to have lean up below another video. Let's have a gander. But you haven't clicked the red button. It's an investment. I know it's an investment. It's hard because you don't like don't want to commit to seeing them more frequent I'm, I'm already i'm already on the homepage. you can't escape me now myself and my headwear like a bad cold i'm lingering cough cough so if i am popping up on your homepage and you are watching my videos without being subscribed i would really appreciate it if you did tickle that red button down below and again at the end of the video i've got a comment question of the week so if you have a question you want to ask me drop it down in the comment section below and i should do so but anyway now sorry a bit longer than 22 seconds sorry austin sorry beth i know you're probably timing as well we'll crack on with the rest of the video oh this is a good one we like this all right so basically erin stone two-time miss olympia i've spoken about this before the rfbb is the largest bodybuilding federation in the world it's the big one so if you want to be big boy in the world of physique competitions bodybuilding wherever it may be ifbb is where to go they do not test so it's free reign in that sense if you're an ifbb pro there's a very strong chance you may be tickling some of the old jesus juice if you're a winner of an ifbb competition like an olympia which is the biggest of the big i'm gonna say no more so we look at erin stone two time miss olympia and a lifetime natty she's won the olympia twice says enough she's a lifetime natty apparently says enough incredible physique absolutely unbelievable so erin is in the figure category there are different categories in bodybuilding the figure is towards the less demanding side when it comes to muscle mass bloody impressive can't take that away from her no chance but you see we've got cap delts 
It's interesting. Skin looks almost paper thin. It's a tricky one. That's a lie. It's not a tricky one. Gonna be honest with you, Aaron looks amazing, but realistically, number one, IFBB, that's a, that's a red flag. Number two, Lifetime Natty, it's a red flag. Number three, Miss Olympia, two time, red flag. There's a lot of red flags occurring. And when trying to tickle who may be natty and who may be enhanced, the traps, the rear delts, and the upper chest, in many cases, naturally weak areas for those not on PDs. So when you do go on PDs, depending on what you're using, this isn't applied to all of them. This is very much depend on what you're using. It can cause them to balloon, i.e. grow at a faster rate. But that's also a bit of another flag is having those capped delts, almost like boulder shoulders. Very desirable, looks fantastic. And because because obviously the figure category does require less muscle mass than some of the other categories, it's almost harder to tell. But you see here, the, sh the shoulders are looking quite round. The rear delts are looking quite developed. Good cappy on the delts there as well. Another one is particularly low body fat. Obviously, I know when you compete in these competitions, you must get very lean. You have to. It's what you're being judged on, partly. But you see, she's particularly lean, which I know is extremely difficult to do for anyone. But these particularly low levels of body fat are a bit of a suspect thing when it comes to women and PEDs. Again, um, this is no disrespect. I'm merely pointing out what I know to be quite good indicators indicators of potential natty status. The slightly masculine features could be an indicator. A lot of PDs are hormone based, a lot of PDs are testosterone derivatives. So when a woman may go on PDs, they may start to develop slightly more masculine features, be that maybe like a bit of an Adam's apple, a slightly deeper voice perhaps, a more pronounced jawline it's not a good or a bad thing it's just part of the process if you're going to go down that route you must understand that there is a risk you will develop some slightly masculine features depending on how your body responds to peds erin does have quite a pronounced jawline again this may just be genetics and maybe how she has always been basically long story short is do i think erin is natter enhanced again based on million opinion i would lean very much towards the enhanced Caroline Gavan, yes, I know you're going to shout at me for pronouncing that name incorrectly. I'm doing it on purpose now because it gets uh, gets people riled up, and plus I'm just really good at pronouncing things badly. You'll see, you know, Caroline is big into home workouts, and I'm a fan of her home workouts. I think she does a bloody good job. A few things come into play here. Lighting, angles, all sorts. In some pictures, you're like, well, that's a lot of muscle mass. It's bloody impressive. Other times, you're like, oh, she's obviously got muscle mass, but maybe she's just actually just quite lean. Lighting's not as favourable here. Things like that. Then you bounce between, like, oh, actually... Shoulders are looking a little bit rounded. Abs looking to find popping. Impressive stuff. Realistically, the shoulders are probably rounded because she's tensing and she's pressing against her sides, encouraging the delts to contract, but it makes them look more rounded. Yeah, I'm going to be straight with you. I think Caroline's been training for a long time. I think she's genetically gifted, and I think she trains very well for what she's trying to achieve. I would actually very much lean towards Caroline being natural rather than enhanced. There's nothing here which really screams enhancements to me, not really shouting the PEDs. Like, she doesn't have the masculine features, although she has a fair bit of muscle mass. If you look in this picture, it's not wild, it's not crazy. Like you can, she's obviously very lean. You can see the collarbone coming through, things like that. But I would say Caroline's natty, to be honest. Lucy Davis Fit is another one that I know, a Gymshark athlete, and is someone who I've been very impressed by in the past. I think she trains very well and is pushing out some good information. So she, I, I would actually say, if you are looking at following someone who is into resistance training, I think Lucy is a great person to follow. Do I think she's natty enhanced? Because she has a lot of muscle mass. She's in great shape. Defined legs, good quads, abs, she's very lean. She's got lats coming through there as well. Nothing here screams PDs to me. I know she trains very well. She trains heavy. She's very strong. She's a bloody strong individual. She's very knowledgeable. There's no overdevelopment in the shoulders. There's no paper thin skin appearance. The traps haven't blown up. Although the rear delts are quite developed here, I wouldn't say they're overdeveloped at all. Again, I can never be certain, but in my opinion, I think she's more likely to be natural than she is to be enhanced. Oh, I'm going to absolutely butcher this name, but I'm going to do it with pride. Tia Claire Toomey All. This is Tia. She's a Commonwealth Games gold medalist. That's a bloody impressive. CrossFit Games champion. Bloody impressive honestly crossfit is not something i do personally it doesn't align with my goals obviously my goals are very much bodybuilding based at the moment also i'm nowhere near fit enough nor will i ever be fit enough because these people are absolute mutants their fitness is just i can't even comprehend how fit they are it's unbelievable rio 2016 olympian as well interesting so she's not immediately claiming natty here although i think the i don't know whether the crossfit games is actually tested or not they may claim it's tested but i'm not sure if it actually is just because it's tested doesn't mean it's clean big difference between drug free and drug tested drug free federation of sports don't exist drug tested ones do because when you're looking for pds and things like that you're not just testing for peds you have to look for specific ones you don't just say look for peds you say look for this 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 and this watch the documentary icarus it's unbelievable so let's have a look at this individual's physique incredible amount of muscle mass it's so impressive having this much muscle mass but also being so fit huge traps very developed traps arm veins coming through one may consider maybe some slightly masculine features here being the jawline perhaps it's not a bad thing at all i just want to clarify i'm merely making an observation based on potentially identifying points when certain 
searching for potential PED use. Realistically, she's a CrossFit Games champion. She's going to be incredibly strong. No arguing that. In my opinion, and only my opinion, I'm very much towards the enhanced side. I have no proof of this. It's a million opinion, and that's all it will ever be because I'm not this individual, therefore I don't know. Now, this is a tricky one. Lauren Simpson is someone I've covered before, someone who I know is extremely strong in extremely good shape. She's very lean. It doesn't have stupid amounts of muscle mass, but considering how much muscle mass she does have, she is extremely strong. She's got like a 150 kilo squat or something like that. Bloody impressive stuff. I know she trains pretty well. I don't think you can get 150 kilo squat not training well, to be honest. The delts aren't massively capped. If anything, considering her strength, you would almost expect her to be more developed regarding muscle mass. Although the jawline is quite pronounced, I think that's very much genetic and also because she is very lean. I look at her here and I think, oh, fantastic shape, bloody impressive, but it's not crazy unachievable in my opinion. Good hamstring development. Like I said, shoulders aren't popping. The upper chest isn't popping. The traps aren't popping. To us, in a lot of cases, I'm not saying this applies to Lauren, but in a lot of physique competitors, be that like potentially figure sometimes or maybe bikini things like that is a lot of them don't actually train their chest very often from the ones i've spoken to is because obviously it's very much an appearance-based contest as all bodybuilding shows are they are appearance-based you're being judged on how you look when you do develop a bit more muscle mass in the kind of pec region it can take away from the pronunciation of other body parts in that region we'll say and when you're trying to show as like a bikini or figure physique you don't want to have more muscle mass there than breast mass in that sense so that's just an interesting thing to note the upper chest is rarely overdeveloped in these individuals because it's not necessarily trained. Lauren's very much a person I say I really don't know. If she has taken anything I would likely assume it would be something to help her get show ready. I get quite lean for a show. I don't want to make a judgment and kind of give my opinion when I'm this unsure. But that's it. Those are the six individuals in question and we've had a look and obviously we've identified a few potential points to consider when looking at whether someone may be natural or enhanced. Again as I said this is merely my opinion. I have no evidence of this. It's not fact whatsoever. An opinion being made based based on my knowledge and the research I've done and the things I know. But now, obviously it's time for Common Quest of the Week. What do you do on your rest days? Do you do active recovery? So I rest two days a week. So I usually rest on a Thursday and a Sunday. It depends. I do tend to do some kind of active recovery. I'll maybe go for a brisk walk for perhaps like half an hour or something like that, just to keep moving. And also partly just to clear my head. I like going for walks. I like putting my music in and just cracking on my life and just thinking about things. Because when you spend a lot of time like working in front of a computer or working wherever it may be, doing these things, it's quite hard to kind of give yourself some time to breathe and just unwind a bit. But to be honest, I'll probably get into something like yoga in the near future. I used to do yoga a lot back in the day and I'd love to get back into it because I'm a big fan. But that's it. That's the video. If you'd like to see a part three, we'll obviously shoot for the like goal, which is 400 likes today. We bumped it up a bit. We'll be a bit cheeky. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button down below and the bell next to it. And if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, drop it down below for comment question of the week and we shall tickle an answer. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my headwear. And thank you for tolerating the video.